What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 104 of Leon Live here in Football Manager 2019. We're back again and well, he's almost back isn't he? Willem Gabels, he's not had the best of recent training. I mean you can see his development's declined over the last three months. It's almost as if he's been out injured. With that broken foot of course, we were given an estimate I think of four to six months He's recovered really, really quickly and really, really well. And, uh, well, hopefully at some point today he might feature. If you missed last episode, it was a big one. We played PSG and Marseille in the French Cup quarterfinal. I'll leave you to go and watch those. And I'm going to assume if you're still here, you watch that episode. So it was good. It was very good. And as you'll know, if you watch that today, we've got some, well, very winnable games. I feel like winnable is probably the best word to use to describe them. We're going to be taking on a few of the teams right down towards the bottom end of the table, those potential kind of slip-up games, the games where it would be very easy to get complacent. It would be very easy to go into these and just think, ah, it's going to be fine. You know, we're going to do superb. What, what could go wrong? No, we need to remain switched on here. We have to remain at our best. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do that today. Of course, we've had a few little injuries over recent time. Uh, the players are coming back to full fitness, which is very, very exciting. And now there's just a little bit of pressure on us, I guess, to go out and get performances with pretty much a full-strength team. Um, yeah, so show, of course, a team who I do have a little bit of a soft spot for after our previous save with them. Of course, a club who were promoted a few years ago. Um, they stayed up quite valiantly in recent years. You'd have to say right now... They are looking a little worse for wear. You can see they're on 22 points, second from bottom. Nantes, who are below them by two points, uh, have two matches in hand as well. So it's really not looking too good for Socho. But uh, as much as um, there's a part of me that's like, oh, we could just let them win, you know, give them three points, help them out. No, I can't, I can't do it. Not that I would ever do it anyway, but we, we know our current own situation. We've, we've got to be at our best. Interesting to see here, lots of players developing a little bit. Uh, Matteo Nahoud, or Naho, I think is how you'd probably say it, the 15-year-old. He's looking very good. Uh, other players, Guillet is continuing to perform well, of course featured in our most recent game. And Kareem Thomas, who of course we signed from Chelsea for £3.1 million, looking very solid as well. Players across the board looking good. I do wonder if in these next couple of games I should look to rotate the team a little. Something that we could perhaps look to do. We'll, we'll have a look at how things are looking going into this game. But um, no, I, I probably could do with rotating things a little bit if necessary. I'm thinking um, maybe bring Trincao into the team. We can give Sunday an appearance. Uh, Kareem Thomas I think we'll bring in for Endombele, a box-to-box -box midfielder. Freitas I'm going to bring in for Maulida. I don't want to rotate things too much and be too complacent here. But I don't know, at the same time I feel like we have to just play things smart here. It's going to be a pretty intense end of the year. If we can rotate things a little bit, we probably should. Militao still not fully fit. So you know what, we'll start Markovic. Going to play Guille and Diaz either side of him. Maybe rotating things a little too much here, but we need to win this game comfortably. I feel like the quality of players we have on our bench and, you know, in the waiting in the wings of our team should be capable of disposing of uh, Socho here. I did notice they have got Salah up top for them, which does make me feel a little bit sad. Of course, um, this save was started prior to the tragic accident he had uh, at the start of this year. Um, we were on the, uh, the winter, well, no, the pre-winter transfer update here in FM, but... Let's hope that we can get a good result here and uh, well, get things off to a flyer to start today's episode. Of course, we've got this game. We've got Nantes to play, Gungam, and uh, I'm hoping we'll also get to the Europa League first leg against Wolverhampton Wanderers. A, a tricky game, a potential banana peel, but we'll do our best. Drinkow rattles the post early on. That's a little bit of a, a warning shot in their direction. There could be another one coming in as the cross is whipped in. Keane hits the woodwork too. I mean, it could have been 2-0 within the first four minutes. As it stands, the woodwork is perhaps still rattling here. So show on the back foot to start things. Another chance, and while we finally find the back of the net, at the third time of asking, Moise Keane hit the woodwork seconds before. And, uh, well, seconds later, he is finding the back of the net. Sunday with the ball in. 15th goal of the season for Moise Keane. That is a really good little return for him, of course. Um, we discussed it at the end of last episode. We've got about 14 matches or 12 or 14 matches. We're pretty much playing three games, well, no, two games a week now for the next month or two. It's going to get intense. So rotation like this is going to be necessary. So I'm more than up, you know, given the likes of Kareem Thomas, Trincao, Freitas, game time here, particularly against lower 
uh, in the table opposition where maybe it can be used as a bit of a springboard to give them a confidence boost going into you know the other games we have upcoming. Anyway, Sunday and Keane being involved in that goal primarily, two players who will feature more than you know most this season. Looking at you know some of the players we brought in really to have an impact now as Trincao whips it in, Kareem Thomas heads it, deflects around, and oh my word, how has that not found the back of the net? Kareem Thomas's shot goes blazing over the bar. Was a well a prime opportunity there, but the effort itself was a little rash, a little wayward. We need to deal with things here as Fuchs has it. Gives it to Payor. Tackle from Freitas. Looked a little dangerous through the back, but he has won it, allegedly. Now Keane bringing the ball forward. Dispossessed. Falls to Kareem Thomas. Pings it wide to Sunday. Options queuing up. Can he pick out his man? Ow, oh, how have you not missed that? How have you not missed that? How have you missed that? It's perhaps the better question. It does go out for a corner. Oh, that's a golden opportunity. Another corner, maybe. We've already scored one of these. That is perhaps the worst corner we've seen all year, though. Unfortunately, I mean, it's 1-0, 40 minutes gone. They've not done anything. Similar to the Marseille game, you know, we've completely shut out the opposition. And yet, we only find ourselves in this game one goal ahead. Boys, I'm not happy. Defensively, I'm happy. Obviously, um, the likes of Diaz and Guillet playing in this game is always... You know, I don't want to say it's a risk, because it's a low risk, really. They're players who should be good enough to play at this level, but... I don't know, higher up the pitch, I would like to see us being a little bit more clinical. I'm looking at you, Freitas. Looking at you, Trincao, maybe to put in a few balls of quality. We've got a chance here, maybe. Hour with it. Hits it from range. I think Prevo didn't need to make the save there. Perhaps one for the cameras. Starting the second half, how we ended the first. Very much on top in this game. Corner. Dealt with well by uh, dealt well by Socho there, though, innit? Well, we, they live to fight another day. 19 shots, just one goal. We've hit that woodwork twice. Two clear-cut chances, 64% of the ball. And yet, much like Markovic, I'm nervous. I'm not, you know, I'm not 100% convinced. I'm not going to get too carried away. Awar's had a bit of a mare of a game. Let's take him off and bring in Kai Havertz there. Freitas hasn't played particularly good. I'm going to bring in Militao, actually, for Markovic. Markovic still struggling a little bit with fitness himself. He missed our most recent game with food poisoning. Uh, Militao, he needs some game time just to build up some match sharpness. This seems like a not bad opportunity to do just that. I mean, seven minutes left. They've done nothing, but I'm still a little nervous. 1-0 would be fine. A clean sheet would be good, but we've struggled for clean sheets, and we're known for perhaps being a little bit susceptible to being hit on the break however time is just running away here it's just trickled away we're gonna get the win it's gonna be one nil i would have liked a few more but we'll take it we'll take it it was never in any doubt i mean it wasn't they didn't score you're gonna struggle to win football matches if you don't score at the same time though i would have liked a little more for us now an away game against Nantes is next away from home it's not gonna be easy Sunday did pick up man of the match there, a player who, I don't know, he's come on leaps and bounds, hasn't he? At £46 million, he's not contributed quite as much as Vargas has in terms of goals and assists, but he's still been very much an ever-present part of the team this year. Just wondering about how I might want to change things up for this game. Two starts going to be suspended, so I think that's going to be Lucas Romero coming in there. Renato Sanchez can then come onto the bench. Gabels still not going to be fit. We'll bring in Mao Leader to lead the line. Uh, a few players struggling a little bit with fitness. Markovic, namely. Also, Awar looking a little worse for wear. And because of the rotation, a number of players are on the bench. Also with less than convincing con uh, condition. The nonce game in just three days' time is a big one. French Cup, PSG taking on Lille. Lille beating PSG would be a big favour. Can they Can they have done it for us? They have done it for us. Wow, okay, that is huge. PSG, I just don't like playing against. But with them out of the French Cup, I think you have to have us down as favourites now. Um, Monaco are still in the competition. Lille and Bordeaux, who are two teams going very strong in the league, are going to play one another. I mean, that's pretty good. The PSG have looked very, very weak in this month of March. They have slipped up in a number of games. And we've been there to capitalise for the most part. 
I guess the one exception to that is the game where we drew with them, where debatably we were the team slipping up. We were, as you may remember, ahead in that game all the way through until the 87th minute. I could have stuck to my guns, perhaps should have stuck to my guns, staying on the front foot, staying attacking. I didn't. And ultimately, it, it did cost us. It did cost us, right. Five players in international duty. I'm going to assume that's some of our younger players. Looks like maybe it's the African Cup of Nations under 23s going on. I don't think that's going to have a direct impact on the first team looking at things here. It is not, so that's good. The Tranco's back on loan at uh, uh, Angers, so we can probably send him um, down to the reserves. Although, um, we should probably get match reports on him whilst he's away, so we'll do that. Team is looking good. Lots of green in the condition and just general fitness area. Uh, I don't want to jinx it too soon, but Cabell's may be back for the Europa League game against Wolverhampton Wanderers, the first leg. I don't know if he'll be fit for the first team and fit and raring to go. We'll have to wait and see in that regard. But we're looking okay here. So we're going to be taking on Nantes. Uh, PSG playing Auxerre and also Monaco playing today. So... Three big games going on all at once. We're taking on the team bottom of the league. I don't want to, you know, be too merciful here, however. I want to, you know, keep going in this game. I think we will go with our strongest eleven. I could bring in Kareem Thomas ahead of Romero. But I feel like I need to give Romero a little bit more first-team football just to keep him happy. Two very similar players in a lot of ways. I think Kareem Thomas is perhaps a little better technically. But, uh, well, nevertheless, this is a game that, regardless of who we play at defence midfielder, we should probably be winning. Looking at their system that they're going to play, I'm actually tempted to change things up here. They're playing so defensively. I mean, you could see their system. They're, they're, they're not doing anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move Romero up, and we're going to play a slightly more conventional shape here. I don't feel like the defence in midfield is as important here. They're playing, as you may have noticed, a 4-2-3-1. But they're playing it with kind of an unconventional, unconventional shape, where they're playing with two defensive midfielders, and then their three kind of, more, I want to say, attacking midfielders. They're not attacking at all. are also going to be sat deeper. I feel like a defensive midfielder is going to be less important. Anyway, hour with the ball here. Could we get off to a flyer? Unfortunately not. That effort goes wide. I mean, their game plan is going to be to frustrate us and try and hit us on the break. PSG winning already against Auxerre 2-0. So we need to do our stuff here. I mean, their big game plan here is going to revolve around just not conceding, around seeing things out. And of course, the longer this game goes on, the more we feel a need, I guess, to commit men forward, the, the bigger that pressure is going to mount on us. End on Bele to Awa. Has another effort from range. This time does find the target. Unfortunately, the keeper, more than up to it, makes a good little stop. 25 minutes gone. We look threatening. We look like by far and away the better team. You can just see how much they're willing to step off players here. This is exactly why I don't feel like we need that defensive midfielder today. Havertz wide on the left. Can he get in a real ball of quality? He can. Now lead us there. He's got to hit the target. His header goes over the crossbar. Uh, Romero has um, picked up a booking. So as a result, I'm going to set him to centre mid on defend and then add the ease out of tackles. Um, kind of instruction there. Can't do that traditionally. Well, not, tr not traditionally at all, but you just can't do that on a ball-winning midfielder. So that is the compromise we've got to make. I don't think it's going to have too much of an impact really on our overall shape. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. You can see Romero is still going to drop in as a centre mid on defend, but at the same time, you know, he, he is willing to make runs beyond and ahead of end on Bele when he needs to. Havertz, lovely ball to Keane, crosses it in. Maulida, please. Cleared away. End on Bele hits it. Keane, I thought he was offside. It's not. He scores. It's his 16th of the year. End on Bele giving a rather generous assist there. I mean, we've been knocking on the door for some time, but we've managed to get an answer now. Keen wide initially with that cross, and then here you can see the shot deflects off a defender. The keeper is just completely caught out. I mean, there's not a lot he can do there. We find what could prove to be a crucial breakthrough. It'll be interesting to see if Nantes even change their system. I imagine they're going to want to try and keep it to one goal until, you know, half an hour left, and then maybe they'll go for a roll of the dice. Um, Monaco drawing in their game. PSG still only 2-0. Not an insurmountable lead for Augsburg, although away from home 
at PSG. I don't, I don't see them turning around that game. We can't really bank on it, can we? Got to focus on what we can do here. Ball cleared away. Markovic heads it to end on Bele. Now with Keane. I mean, straight from kickoff. Why not? Awa dispossessed, but falls to Vargas. Now with Lucas Romero. I kind of might even. I'm kind of tempted to take off Lucas Romero. I'm scared about that booking. Awa. Not not the best end product with that ball there, and it's cleared away. I think I will take off Romero. I'm talking myself into it. Here he is with the ball. He hits it. I mean, he, he heard the fact it might be his last kick of the game. He decided to get a kind of speculative effort in. I'm actually going to bring in Renato Sanchez, not Kareem Thomas. As much as I brought you know Renato Sanchez in as a bit of a backup player who I kind of brought in with a view to sell on for some money. If we do want to sell him on, we need to give him some game time. You know, that is something that I've noticed this year in FN is very, very important. When in selling players, you need them to have game time and like a reason to be signed. Augsair, by the way, they've just turned it around to 2-2 in the 51st minute. Never doubted you, Augsair. PSG, what are you doing, PSG? They're going to score. I'm not going to get carried away, but... If this is a penalty here and we can take a two-goal lead, I will just be staring in the top left for Augsair versus PSG updates. I'm assuming this will be a penalty. It is going to be a penalty. It's going to be Awar to take it. He's been very good from the spot recently. Last few, the keeper have gone the right way but been unable to stop it. Let's hope for another goal here to add to the collection. And, well, this time the keeper goes the wrong way. Auer tucks it away. 13th goal of the season for him. He's becoming a bit of a penalty god, it feels like. And, well, we're 2-0 up against the team who are bottom. PSG is slipping up. Monaco, I did notice, have taken the lead in their game now 1-0. And, well, I don't want to disregard Monaco, but I feel like they're a lot less important for us to be looking at now compared to PSG. Ball wide here with Havertz. A few goals for goal difference wouldn't be bad. Keane's header over the bar is a little underwhelming. Militao on a booking. We'll take him off to be safe. And also, I'm going to bring in... Uh, yeah, I am. I'm going to bring in Trincao for Varga Vargas, just to protect Vargas. Half an hour left, 2-0 up against the team who were bottom. I feel like this is the perfect kind of situation, just to save the legs of some of our more important players. They've not gone more attacking either. I feel like they've decided that 2-0 would be an acceptable result. Looking a little bit complacent, which I'm not loving. I'm also not loving the fact that Monaco have gone two goals up, but I've not seen any more PSG goal updates. Of course, not all the goal updates tend to show up here, but with so few games being played at once here, you know, there's only three matches and two if you exclude our own, you would expect to see the majority of the updates kind of coming in. Maybe PSG have drawn. Maybe they are gifting us it. Zuma... Makes it 3-0 for Monaco. What was the PSG score? They did draw 2-2. Two, two, two. Auxerre, you, my friends, are doing us big, big favours right now. I mean, there's plenty of matches yet to go. I mean, 10 more if you're PSG, but we go ahead of them and we've got a game in hand. I mean, we have breathing room. Dare, dare I utter the words breathing room? We have it. It's there. I actually thought our team this game was particularly good, so I think I might even go with an unchanged team. The only exception I may be thinking would be Lucas Romero for two start. And then Renato Sanchez unfortunately unfortunately loses his spot on the bench. So we've got Gungam on Saturday, and then we have got a nice little rest until the Wolves game. So that's good. A little bit less rotation perhaps needed for this Gungam game because it's not like we're going to be playing half a week later. We've got, you know, five games for recovery, which should be enough without the need for a rest, I think, for that Wolves game. I'm not sure when PSG are going to be playing. If they've got a midweek Champions League game, they could very much be playing on the Friday or Saturday as well. I mean, thank you, Walks Air. How have they done that? How have they? I mean, I, I wanted to believe. I didn't think it was possible. They've done it. Very cool. Augsair, thank you. Lopez should be dropped by Portugal. I mean, he's on his way to Rangers, so it doesn't really bother me. I mean, Gungam are ninth, so we can't get too carried away and too complacent. But by the same token, we should be beating them. It should be comfortable. It should be easy. It will probably end up being neither. 
Keane continuing to do well in training. As a reminder, we missed Keane for the first half of the season. He came back and then Gabels was out injured, which I feel like makes our form even more impressive. Now, leader's form deserves a recall. I mean, he might not even be in the starting 11 come May. Apparently, Omar Lopez of Guinea-Bissau... Guinea-Bissau? I'm not sure. He's a top target who we should be looking at. He is pretty good, to be fair, the defensive midfielder. I love players with really odd nationalities. He is... He's pretty good. I don't think he's good enough for our team, but in terms of unusual nationalities, you love to see it. It's one of my favourite things in FM. Is that weird? Debatably so. Anyway, Gungam in ninth. Away from... It's not a freebie. It's not, I'm not going to get carried away. Still expect us to win comfortably, but it ain't a freebie. Our unbeaten run must be stretching back pretty far at this point. We lost two games in the league, and they were the two of the first three games of the year. Our last defeat was at Monaco in the Coupe de la Ligue quarter-final. That was at the start of January. You can see since then, that run of form is pretty incredible, and lots of clean sheets in there as well, which is nice. So yeah, we are going to be playing earlier... When do PSG play? Looks like they're not playing actually right now, but I guess this might be our game in hand. Yeah, you can see Monaco and PSG actually playing in, in the Coupe de la Ligue final. Right. Let's get a good result here. This is our game in hand. Let's make the most of it. I'm going to bring Sunday into the team. I'm going to bring in Vargas actually to play out on the left. I'm sorry, Havertz. Gabels, how close are you to being fit? Still not recommended to be selected, but I'm just going to leave you on the bench anyway. Advice is there to be ignored. That's what a famous man once said. I don't, I don't know who the famous man was, but he must have been wise. I think it might have been me. Anyway, away from home. Ninth in the table, Gungam. They're going to want to give us a game here. We need to be at our best. The fact that PSG slipped up does mean this is not a free game, but... It's a game that we don't have to worry about on quite the same level. I don't... I'm, not, I'm someone who likes to be ahead and setting the bar for other teams rather than chasing. I don't know if that's just me who's like that. I feel like everyone has their own preference. But I would rather be, you know, the team ahead like we are now, just trying to set win after win after win, rather than being sat, say, six points behind PSG but with three games in hand. I don't like that pressure of knowing, right, this is what we need to do. I'd rather be setting the standard than, you know, trying to match someone else. Which might seem like a bizarre bit of psychology now that I think about it. But that's how my brain works. It's like in racing games. I'd rather be in second chasing... No, actually, no, I'd rather be in first setting the, the pace for second. Unless it's a game like Mario Kart with just BS mechanics that mean that, you know, you can be leading the whole race and it means nothing. I don't like being slipstreamed either. But there, anyway, let's focus on the game. Enough racing. Sunday whips it in. Keen back post. We have far too many of the, those headers go over the bar, don't we? It's one of the things I feel like I remember FM19 for is the headers over the bar that you do see. Their shape is quite interesting, actually. With their wide players, there's going to be quite a lot of demand on our wider centre-backs to shut them down. And Ballet has picked up a booking. It, I mean, it's 0-0 after 41 minutes. It's a little soon to be panicking just yet, but... There is a small alarm <laughs> bell ringing in the back of my mind. Toussaint, end on Bele. To Sunday. Could cut inside here and have a go. He does. Blazes it over the crossbar, unfortunately. Looks like we could go into half-time here without the deadlock being broken. They're forced into a sub. No, though, it matters a great deal. They've not had a shot all game. We've not created enough either, however. I'm going to make a change here in this to start this half. I'm actually going to change Keane to be uh, complete forward on attack. And I want us to ditch the shorter passing just a little bit. I want us to get the ball further forward. I might switch to attacking after half an hour. Oh, not after half an hour. With half an hour left. I feel like leaving things until the last 15 minutes in terms of tactical changes is usually a little bit late in football. Of course, in an ideal world, we get our noses ahead early on in the second half. And that's what we're going to look to do here. Our to Mao leader dinks it wide to Sunday. Asks a lot of him, but he gets there. Whips it in. Keen. I mean, 
It looked like a foul. We're going to VAR. VAR has been our best friend for penalties recently. I guess with the amount of pressure we mount on teams, the amount of possession that we possess, the amount of shots we create, the amount of times we just get the ball into the opposition area, it's kind of inevitable that we're going to get a lot of penalties. It looked like a nasty tackle, it's got to be said. Is it going to be given? It is going to be given. Our, we look to you again. A little penalty maestro. What can you do for us? He steps up the number eight. He hits it. Oh my word. The keeper has tipped it onto the post. And then it's just not got across the line. And it remains nil-nil. I'm going to shout demand more out the players. Awa off the back of that. I'm actually going to take off for Havertz. That is a, a psychological blow, I feel like, to Awa. Havertz, the sub, on off the bench. Whips in two starts. Heads it! Just over the bar. Chance after chance after chance, but we just can't find a breakthrough. I'm going to bring in Freitas for Maulida, who's been disappointing. And I think with my last change, I'm going to... I'm going to take off Sunday. I am. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to bring in Trincao, uh, I think. I've, I've messed up my team selection here. Havertz should stay there. And then Vargas goes out onto the right. There we go. And then Trincao comes in. So Vargas on the right, Trincao on the left. Havertz moves into the final third. Right. I mean, we need we need something here, boys. I'm going to demand more. Nine minutes left. It's nil-nil there now on the attack. Don't do this to me, FM. They've not had a shot on target all game. They could have one here. It's gone just over the crossbar. Let's let's commit a little bit more going forward, shall we? No more distributing to the centre-backs. Be more direct in your play. We need to get the ball up the pitch with five minutes left. Got to go for it. Got to go for it. Time trickling away. They've now got another chance. In an attempt to attack more, we are leaving ourselves more exposed. It's another set piece. Could be a replay of the last one looking at it. They've got a chance here. I mean, they could score here. Coco, it's a disaster. It's an absolute blooming disaster. I don't know how they've robbed us here. One shot all game, they find the back of the net. We didn't create enough. We, we'll look back on that penalty missed as an absolute disaster, I'm sure. Swung the whole game. Donnarumma, you've got to do better there. We have two minutes, less than two minutes to get a goal. Is it doable? Of course it's not. That is going to be all she wrote, I think, unless Freitas can pull out a miracle. I mean, fair play to Gungam. There's a reason they're ninth in the league and we've experienced it just there. How have we lost that? Their keeper's got man of the match. I mean, that's that says everything, doesn't it? Only four shots on target, to be fair. I think that, that was largely inflated by his save. PSG beat Monaco in the final. I mean, you can see here, everyone has now played even games. It's very close, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 10 games left of the year. You can expect a more close end to the season than this. PSG winning the Coupe de la Ligue is big. It's going to maybe make Monaco hungry for further success. If I'm not mistaken, uh, PSG have a game on this weekend, the 8th, when we don't have one. Oh, that's so annoying. We were so on top in that game. So on top. It's hard not to feel bitterly disappointed. Let's hope that that's not a sign of things to come this month. I will hope now that Gabels is fit and raring to go. When he's fit, I think he's on penalties ahead of Awa. I can't actually remember. I think Awa's actually ahead of Gabels. We're not like Manchester United, you know. We don't just arbitrarily decide. There, there is a pecking order. It's just been so long since the pecking order's kind of been complete in terms of the players who are towards the top of it all being on the pitch at once. Gabels resumes full training. Now, I feel like it's going to be a little bit soon for him to start today's upcoming game against Wolves. But it does bode well, and I think he's probably worth a spot on the bench. If I'm not mistaken, PSG are going to be taking on uh, Porto here, so their fixture congestion is going to continue. 
the fact that they're playing this upcoming weekend, if I'm not mistaken, is interesting. As I said, I'd rather be setting the pace. We had a chance to do it in that last game and we've completely blown it at the first time of asking. Yeah, they've got uh, Porto, then they've got Montpellier. I mean, look at that fixture congestion. That is nasty stuff. We don't even play on the 8th. If Nancy could beat Monaco, that would be good. They're not going to do it. So Monaco into the semi-finals. How are PSG going to get on against Porto? In the back of my mind, I actually kind of want them to beat Porto now. Okay, they've lost. I want them to go further in this competition, PSG, because that would help us massively. French Cup semi-final, it's going to be ourselves or Toulouse, who are down in the second division, taking on Bordeaux. You could say that the quarter-final is ours, Toulouse. Get it? Toulouse? Cause, but they get on Toulouse? No. Okay. Right. Sunday is suspended for this game. So congratulations, Havertz. You're going to get a start. Gabels, what's your fitness test saying? 45 minutes. Maybe on off the bench then in the second half. Uh, Sunday being unavailable opens up an opportunity for Renato Sanchez. I mean, things are looking pretty good, aren't they? Things are looking pretty good in terms of squad availability. Not in terms of that most recent result. Right, let's get into it. We've got a week off after this game, so a nice chance to regroup. They are playing a 4-1-4-1. Of course, they've got Depay, our former man. He's leading the line for them. He's actually got 12 goals this season. Diego Jota and Adama Traore on either wing. Otamendi, not had the best of seasons so far in real life. He's not particularly quick. That could be something we can abuse with our very, very pacey attack. I'm actually, I want to check something real quick. Is Otamendi's playing left centre back, right? So, I want to flip my team. I want Keane to play on the shoulder of Otamendi. I want him to be sat there causing him all kinds of problems. That's the side of centre backs that we're going to look to overload with our system today. Let's see if it works out for us. I don't think we've ever flipped the system before, but it just makes sense in this situation. I don't know why I've never done it before. I guess I don't spend as much time as I could studying opposition, but it's something we could certainly look to do more of. But in this kind of game against an ageing Otamendi, I kind of like the idea of causing him issues. Is Otamendi trying to play out from the back? I mean, having seen his performance against Norwich, hoping for good things, although Traore bring the ball forward here. Goes on a long run, gives it to Diego Jota, who will look to whip it, and he does. Back post, Militao gets it away to Vargas, who heads it straight to Gibbs White, unfortunately. We look to press high and press hard. They're going to break through with it, though. Adama Traore crosses it into Diego Jota, who hits the outside of the post. We've had way more chances than them early on, but the first great opportunity of the game does fall to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Perhaps a warning to us that they are going to, despite their wingers playing deeper, at least initially, with their roles and their duties, they are going to push further forward. They are going to look for the overlap. An away goal would be nice in this game, but if we can go into it with a draw, I feel like we should win the home leg. That would be the aim, although Gibbs White here may be going to have other ideas. His effort there, just wide of the post ultimately. A little concerning though for us, I feel like. The episode, well, the matches we've had this episode, they've not had loads of goals in them. The matches have not been long matches. Sometimes you have games that can last, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. It's been very much to the point so far, it feels like. Do I want to change anything here? I don't know if I do. They're yet to have a shot on target. I'm not going to do what we did in our last game. I'm not going to panic early. I'm going to stick with what we know because it's doing okay statistically. And, well, end on Bele, you can just do that, can't he? Ninth goal of the season for him. Another crucial long shot that finds the back of the net. Vargas again with the ball in. It's something that's happened very, very frequently, it feels like, this year. Vargas just playing it inside to end on Bele. And because of the way Vargas likes to drift inside, it usually involves one of the centre mids, you know, moving across to cover him. And just gives end on Bele a route onto goal. And he's found it again there to put us ahead in this game 1-0. 
Awar now, set piece, crossed in, back post, Keane heads it across, it falls to Militao. I was thinking about making a sub, I'm just going to hold off doing that right now. Two goals in the first ten minutes of this second half, exactly what the doctor ordered. We are taking this game by the scruff of the neck. Keane's effort in, and well, it, it, I think it, the final touch was off Militao. It, I don't know if a defender maybe got a touch there, just didn't quite deal with it enough, but... 2-0 were looking good. They are making changes though. They brought in Zaha and they brought in this guy who I'm not familiar with. We'll just call him Jordan for fear of saying his last name incorrectly. But they are mixing things up here. They will know having conceded two away goals, they probably need to get at least one goal in the last 27 minutes of this game to stand a chance. Lovely tackle there. Falls to Keane. Passed across to Malida. Can we score it? That is such an incisive breakaway. I love that. Tenth goal of the year for Maulida. I don't know who it was who put in the tackle here. It's Kai Havertz. What a tackle that is. And then we just punish. You can see there Keane dances around Otamendi. It's what we brought him in to do. Squares it intelligently. Maulida tucks it away. And I'm sorry, Maulida. Actually, I'm not. I'm not going to take him off. I'm going to take off Keane. We're going to bring in Cabells. Two tots on a booking. Let's play things safe. Lucas Romero, get on the pitch. I mean, if Gabel scores now, it's the perfect result as far as I'm concerned. Vargas to Romero. Whipped in. Maulida's there. He gives it to Kai Havertz. Now with end on Bele. Maulida already got one goal, maybe hungry for some more. I mean, we're pressing hard here, trying to force Wolves into an error. They do play out of the press quite nicely there, and it could leave them with some space to run into. Ball switched over to Adama Traore, who puts on the afterburners. Unfortunately, his finish at the end of it, particularly disappointing. Hits it straight at the keeper. And well, we, we live to hold on to the clean sheet for another day, at least for now. Militao heads it clear. Dendonka not fully dealt with here. Three players commit into that tackle. You love to see it. Just desperate to make sure Zaha doesn't have that space at the edge of the box. Ten minutes left, and the only thing we're missing really is to secure the clean sheet and for Gabels to get a, a, a goal himself. The chance there for Dendonka wasn't a bad one at all. They are still desperately looking for that goal that you feel like they require to stand any chance here. Oh my gosh, what a stop by Donnarumma. That is an incredible save. It was destined for the top corner. He's managed to kind of wrap his fingertips around it, scoop it out. Four minutes left. I was about to make our last change. We'll wait and see who, what's going to break here. As Awa has a slightly ambitious go from about 40 yards out. I'm going to take off Awa, I think. We'll bring in Freitas for him. Just a chance to give the youngster a little bit of game time. Give him, give him a platform to shine on. 89th minute. Vargas still bringing it forward. Freitas, fresh off the bench, dinks it for Havertz, who should keep this in if he tries. He does, although... In doing so, he indirectly gives possession back to Wolves, who will now look to break through Zaha. He crosses it across to Adama Traore, who hits it. Donnarumma on this occasion couldn't get to it. That looked a lot more difficult than his previous save to make. And, well, what on the face of it might seem like a consolation might just give Wolverhampton Wanderers a route back into this game and into this fixture in the second leg. Donnarumma, could he have done better? Probably. It's goalkeepers in Football Manager. You'd never expect them to make incredible saves in truth. I feel like that's going to be all she wrote. Still, despite losing the clean sheet, a massive, massive result for us. We will take that away from home. Three away goals. A big win margin as well is going to help us out massively. You know, if we, if we score one... Wolverhampton Wanderers are going to need three. And with how good we've been defensively for the most part this year... I can't see a world in which we concede free. I mean, the last time we conceded free was against Monaco back at the start of January. It's going to be a tall order for Wolverhampton Wanderers because they're going to need to be solid at the back, but also going forward very, very good. Anyway, we're not going to do the second leg today, but we are going to continue forward just over the weekend's games because, as we saw, PSG have got a game. It's a game that they have ahead of us. I think Monaco may be playing as well. Um, with that in mind, obviously, we well, could wait until next episode, but we want to know what they're doing now. Um, we've got a weekend off because of the way the weird scheduling just seems to work this year, which is absolutely fine. We will hope 
that uh, they slip up again. I, I'm not sure who they're playing, actually. I feel like it's one of those very winnable games for them, although in recent week, weeks it's been the winnable games that they've slipped up in. Anyway, Bordeaux v Nice. Bordeaux in fourth. Not really a game that concerns us too much. Bordeaux win it 2 0 in the Friday game. I'm not sure if PSG are going to be playing on the Saturday or Sunday. Now, normally they'd play on the Sunday, but I think their Champions League game is on the Tuesday. So I would be very surprised if they're not playing on the Saturday here. So Marseille v Monaco, I think, is the earlier game looking at things. Donnarumma's picked up an injury. Is that a bad one? Do I need to be concerned? One to two. Okay, it's fine. I skipped over it without reading it, but I could have done it. It, it was fine. Right, so Monaco v Marseille, and then PSG against Montpellier, who are 12th. I mean, Monaco could do us a favour here, because... Uh, sorry, Marseille could do us a favour over Monaco. As much as I've disregarded Monaco, and I was doing it not that long ago, they have been hot on our heels. They've lost 4-1 there, which is huge. Massive, massive result for us. That, that gives us a little bit of breathing room. Now can Montpellier do the double for us? As a reminder, Monaco and PSG do still have to play one another. Unfortunately, PSG, a last-minute own goal gets them the win. That is a little heartbreaking, but, I mean, it's still all very much in flux. They've got Brest on a Friday and then Lorient the following Tuesday. Have we got games around then? Let's have a look. We've got a game on the Sunday and then a game on the Wednesday. So we are playing after them. They are going to continue to try and set the tempo. It doesn't mean that they do have a chance on their Friday game to pull, you know, further ahead of us. They could pull four points clear with two games in hand, or five points clear with two games in hand, rather. Still a lot to play for with ten league games left, and it's going to be an interesting end to the season, particularly with us being in the French Cup. The Euro, uh, well, the Europa League we look like we should be in the semi-final of now. It's not all said and done, is it? And, uh, well, I'm going to leave you on this cliffhanger to wonder about things where we'll be back next time. Anyway, guys, I do hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you have, do drop a like on it. Let me know what you thought of the results today. Some good ones. Good to see Cabell's back in the first team. Maybe ready to start against Wolves. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, you'll be here to see that anyway. And, uh, yeah, other than that, it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.